I need two volunteers. Okay. Who else wants to volunteer? Okay, come on down. You want to be embarrassed or you want to embarrass him? You don't care? <laughs> okay, come on over here to the door. You want to be on the outside or the inside? You can be on the outside. Okay. So you're going to push. Thank you. from opening the door. Okay. Okay. So she's outside here. She's pushing on the door right here. He is going to push as hard as he can right here. Actually, no, let me reverse the roles. You come on the inside. You're going to push here. <laughs> you already know what's going to happen. Okay, so he's, he, it's easier to do it this way. Your job is to stop her from opening the door by pushing right there. Okay, so he's pushing on the out. He's on the outside. He's pushing right about here, in close to the hinges. She's going to push over here. His job is to stop you from opening the door. Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> now don't squash him against the concrete there. Right? Okay. okay, try again. He's really leaning now. Okay. Come in for a second and I'll have you. All right. What was the matter? Is he a wimp? No. What's the problem? They were applying a force. I'm sure he was applying a much bigger force than her because I saw him in there leaning and really pushing against it. You can't see that. It's her force. I mean, how is it that her force, which is likely to be smaller than his force because of the way they were doing it, why was she able to overcome him? Further away from the hinge. Okay, now go out and you push right here. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Now he was pushing farther from the hinge like her, and clearly, as we saw in here, she wasn't able to open the door. So now we're getting to torque. Thanks. Wow, right? That was... So when we see that, what we've been doing so far, I mean, in the beginning of this course, what did we do? We talked about things flying through the air, and we ignored where the anything about the forces, right? We just talked about what is it doing. Then we got to Newton's laws, and we talked about you know, forces, and we, okay, that's the thing that's causing some change in the motion. But we, you and I all know something. We know that where you push, where you apply the force actually matters too, right? Not just that we do apply a force, but where we apply the force makes a difference. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that when it comes to causing things to rotate. We're not, actually, we're not going to have anything actually rotate. We're just going to start it. And then later on after this next exam, we're going to talk about a thing called impulse, which is how long you apply the force. The length of time that you apply a force makes a difference versus just that I applied the force. So that's kind of where we're going. All right. So we need a little more tools. It's not just a force. We have to think now about where we're going to put it. you got to recognize now we're in, it, they're far enough into the course. Think about these as tools in my toolbox. In the beginning, you had those three equations, four equations, and your brain. Now you have your brain, those four equations, plus Newton's laws, plus center of gravity, plus a few extra tools. Lots of times you can go back to those original set of tools, but you're going to find that those original set of tools are not as effective in all the problems as new sets of tools. And so a lot of time the stop, look, and think step is pausing and thinking, which tool am I going to use? Am I going to go with Newton's laws? Am I going to go with 
this? Am I going to go with torque? Am I going to go with energy? Am I going to go with momentum? When we get to all those. You're going to have all these different things you got to think about. And we're going to limit ourselves to what's called static equilibrium. We're not going to actually have the thing rotating. We're just what will happen, you know, what is, how, it, if it were able to rotate, what would be causing it to rotate. Remember what static means, not moving. So it's just, it's about to move. All right, torque. We use the symbol tau. For torque, what is it? It is the turning effect of a force. It is, the, if I apply a force and it causes the thing to rotate, it, that's the piece that we need. Now, torque, what is torque involved? The formula for torque, torque equals RF, perpendicular. What does that mean? There's a couple slightly different here in this equation of things we need to think about. The force that's causing the torque or causing the thing to rotate, it's the component of the torque that is perpendicular to R. So I have to figure out the components. What is R? What does R usually measure? Radius. Notice we did not put, so if I have a wrench, if I had a big wrench, and it's sitting there. There's my wrench. And I apply some force to it. It's the component that's parallel, I mean perpendicular. And this is R. R is the distance from the point of rotation to where the force is applied. It is not an X. But step back. What is an X or a Y? Distance measured from the, from the origin, right? And where is the origin? Wherever I want to put it. So if I look at mathematical equations and I see an X or a Y, that's telling me that I can put my origin wherever I want and I'm measuring from that spot. If I see an R, I do not have the same choices. R is measuring from the point of rotation to wherever I apply the force. The point of rotation is sometimes fixed for me. It's not anywhere I want it to rotate. If I have a teeter-totter, if you remember that toy from elemental school, where does it rotate? On that pipe thing in the middle, right? You, don't, you, know, you can't jump on that teeter-totter and decide, I want it to rotate over here, right? If it starts rotating over here, what's the problem with this teeter-totter? Probably broken, right? And so when you see an R, I don't have as much choice. It's not an X, it's an R, which measures from the point of rotation. Now sometimes I do have some choices, more than you realize, but it's not unlimited choices. A coordinate system I can put anywhere I want, 500 feet away from the object I care about. When I'm talking about torque and rotating things, I still have to be attached to the object at least. You know, the point of rotation can't be 500 feet away from the object itself. Okay? And so we're going to do, there's basically two types of problems we're going to solve here. One of them is you're going to be on a wrench, you have a wrench, or you're stepping on something, and what's the torque? That's going to be tau equals RF. That's one force applied to some wrench or some long thing that you're twisting it. You know, person standing on a bicycle pedal. What's the torque on the pedal? The other one is we're going to be the sum of the forces. Now, this is just like Newton's laws. F equals ma. If I have one force, what's the acceleration? Now, sometimes you're going to have multiple forces applied. So now we use the sum of the forces. And they're going to apply a force. And so, and we're going to be in a static situation, which means a balance. So if I have multiple things applied, you know, like a teeter-totter, there's your person on the, you know, there's your teeter-totter. It's pivoted about here like this, something like that. There's the point of rotation, right? My R is measured from that point. 
I don't measure it from here because this is not a point of rotation, right? This is the point of rotation on the, so that's where I measure from, okay? If I have somebody over here and somebody over here, do they cause the same torque? Depends, right? But torque is actually a vector. So even if they're the same distance and the same weight, do they cause the same torque? No. What's different? Direction. One will cause clockwise rotation. One will cause counterclockwise rotation. And so now minus signs and plus signs are going to play a little bit different role. Because something can turn, we're going to use clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. For our purposes, for this class, we're not, I'm not going to, you know, which is positive, which is negative. Clockwise, counterclockwise, I don't know. You just need to be consistent. There is a convention that I think clockwise is positive and counterclockwise is negative. But I could be opposite. But for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. You just need to know that if I have something applied to force here and it's causing clockwise rotation, you're going to call that plus. And if this thing over here, it's still a force down, right? They both are forces down, but they both don't cause the same type of rotation. One will cause clockwise, one will cause counterclockwise. And you're going to use that as your plus and minus, because both forces are down. You need something else. How does it cause it to rotate? Okay, so let's, let's look at a couple examples here so it make a little more sense. So I've got this broom. I told you how to find the balance point the other day. What do you do? You take it and just slide your hands, hands along and eventually you end up at the balance point. So there's the balance point of this broom. I'm cheating because there's actually a line written on here already. So knew where it was going to be. So there's my balance point. The question is, everything's nicely balanced. What does that tell me? Things are nice and symmetric and equal, right? Okay. So here's the question. If I take these two pieces apart, and weigh them, what do I know? Will the brush end be much heavier? Or will the handle end be much heavier? Will the brush end be just a little bit heavier? Or will the handle end be just a little bit heavier? Because notice that when I took this apart, from the balance point, it's here. But when I take it apart, There is a chunk of the handle that was on the brush end of the thing, and now with the handle. So, is it going to be just a little bit heavier? Or are they going to be the same because it was nicely balanced? What's your vote? Huh? And we'll measure that we'll weigh them here in the end. So all in favor of the brush being much heavier? Uh, about five, uh, maybe ten of you. All in favor of the handle being much heavier? One. <laughs> brush and just a little bit heavier. Okay. Lots. Handle just a little bit heavier. Same amount. The same. Just a few of you. So it looks like about four. All right. So let's weigh them. All right. So I weigh it. What do I see? Can you see that? Four. Four newtons. The handle weighs four newtons.
brush down. What's the brush weigh? What is that? 10? So the brush is weighing 10 newtons. Just a little bit more or lots more? Much heavier. Get back to the computer. Why is that? The brush is much heavier. Those of you who voted brush much heavier, what did you know? Go ahead, speak loud. Ah, what? Where is the center of gravity? Right where the balance point was, right? The balance point is the center of gravity of this thing. And the, gra the center of gravity of this system is close to the brush end. Now, if we think back, way, way back to that problem to, that we had today where we had three things in a square, right? When we had bigger objects as this end, what does it do to the center of gravity? Shifts the center of gravity towards that heavy end. The closer you are to that heavy thing, the closer you are, that tells you a lot more how much bigger the mass is. The Earth-Moon system, where was the center of gravity? We still got like three minutes here. Where was it? In the Earth. What does that tell you about the Earth moon? Earth is much bigger than the moon. The other thing is, okay, when I'm balanced, this, the Earth, so now let's go to torque. So that was center of gravity. Think about it from torque. I have something applying a force over here and I have something applying a force over here. This is like a teeter-totter, right? It's like a teeter-totter. Where is gravity applying the force on this side, the handle side? The center of mass of the handle in between, right? Over here somewhere. Somewhere out here. Where is gravity applying the force on this side? Right there in the middle, right? Because it's kind of set symmetric. This is he and she at the door, right? Close to the hinge far from the hinge kind of situation. I know in this case, but remember, torque is not just the force, it's force times its distance. So being even a smaller force times the distance will equal the same amount of torque. 